Hey team, welcome back to another Bullpen Bulletin. Uh, I took a little time off, but I am back with another video today. Um, today we are talking about how to use stations for maximum productivity. Um, and first thing I wanna say with this is, this is more about one skill and how to best use stations to practice one skill and teach one skill to your players. So I can't wait to dive into this new piece of content. Today we're talking about stations and how to use them for maximum productivity. Today's the Bullpen Bulletin. I'm Coach Hart, and I can't wait to get started. So let's get into it. So the first thing we'll talk about is why do we use stations and why do I like them so much and why are they so good? Um, the first one is stations allow you to break up a big skill into smaller and bite-sized pieces. So a lot of kids get overwhelmed if you're trying to teach them the entire skill all at one time. And stations allow you to just break them up into smaller and bite-sized pieces, like I said. Uh, this helps players understand the full skill piece by piece, and they'll be more successful in their learning. So if you're breaking up their learning and focusing on little bite-sized pieces, that kind of maximizes their learning in that skill. Uh, stations are great to use as a precursor to the bigger part of practice. So what this means is if you're planning on doing defense or doing hitting or doing a large skill in practice, starting the practice with stations is a great precursor and helps them practice those skills before they get into the large team skills that you're going to practice later on in practice. Uh, you're going to break down the game into pieces and then build it all back up in the same practice. That's how maximum comprehension takes place. Um, basically, what the kid sees is they have this skill and they have this thing that they're going to do in the field. You're going to break it all down into puzzle pieces or little bite-sized pieces. Um, and then later on in practice, they'll be able to build it all back up to practice the entire skill. And that just allows for maximum comprehension. So all players are practicing at the same time and this minimizes standing around. So this is another benefit, right? Sometimes in practice, you have some players that are waiting around for something or they're just kind of standing around not to really doing much. Stations is a great way to allow everyone to practice at the same time. And like we said, we don't want a lot of standing around in this. So two to four players at each station, I think is a sweet spot for productivity. I mean, if you think about it, no one wants to be at a station alone. You can't really practice alone, right? And if you have more than four, like five or six kids, at that point, you have some more standing around where kids are just kind of waiting to get into the station. Two to four players, it has a really nice pace to it, and everybody's able to get their right amount of practice in each station uh, with two to four players. And most kids are better learners in smaller groups rather than in front of the team. Um, if you think about it, you know, Think about public speaking. Nobody likes to be in front of a group. Kids are the same way. They like to learn in smaller groups rather than in front of the whole entire team. So stations is just a great way to highlight that learning style for these kids. And they enjoy working on smaller skills in shorter periods of time. This is really talking about their attention span, right? If you have smaller skills to work on, that's a more hyper-focused thing to focus on. They can't work on skills for a longer period of time. So these stations allow you to really hit that sweet spot of their comprehension and practicing the smaller skills in the smaller groups. Um, and also when you're solo at practice, like you don't have any assistant coaches with you, stations allow you to work with every player during practice. And you're gonna choose one station to work with players at. So you're gonna stay at that station and work with every player as they rotate through. Sometimes when you're solo at practice and you don't have any help with assistant coaches, you're trying to go to every station and then by the end of the stations or by the end of practice, you're like, wait, did I work with them? Did I work with them? This allows you to stay at one station. For example, like the T, if you're doing hitting stations, you stay at the T station and every group that rotates through, you work with every individual kid and that allows you to give every player equal amount of time, which is what they want, right? Stations is a great way to use that when you're solo at practice. And like I said, this allows you to give each player your time rather than moving to different stations and trying to be everywhere at once, right? And lastly, it's not likely you'll have a coach at every station. So even if you have two or three assistant coaches with you, you probably won't just have two or three stations, right? There will be some stations where the kids are going to be at the station by themselves. And this leads to a core skill players learn during stations is to help each other improve. And this is a key thing to their growth as a player. 
because they won't always have the help of a coach to do everything for them, especially when they get to higher levels like high school. The coach will expect them to be able to do soft toss, to be able to do batting practice, to be able to help each other out, get better, because they won't have the coach there to help them out. And they're going to learn how to be efficient in practice and not waste time but goofing around or being off task. And this is something that you'll probably need to teach them before you start your centers. Basically saying, hey guys, I'm only one coach. I'm not going to always be there at every station. You all need to rely on each other as teammates to help you all get better as a whole and to help your teammates get better as a player. So this is a key skill that they need to learn as they get older. And stations is a great way to help teach them how to help each other get better. Um, so we're going to get into the two styles of stations that I have. So the style one is a set of progression stations. You're basically going to start with the basic part of the skill, and then you're going to build up by practicing the whole skill at the end. It's almost like building blocks. So if you see this example, this kid is hitting off of a tee. That's going to be station one, right? And then you're going to have all the way up in the last station, station number five, let's say, is going to be hitting in the cage or hitting BP. So station two, three, and four, it could be like soft toss or different progressions that lead up to the final full skill of hitting a baseball. And the second one is different methods of one skill. So different methods on how to practice one skill. Um, and like I said, this is using different methods to practice one type of skill. And this gives players multiple different views and angles of a skill, which will make them a more well-rounded player. And in this example, we have the skill of fielding a variety of hit balls in the infield, right? Now, the different stations to work on the skill of fielding a variety of hit balls in the infield, basically playing the infield position, you could have station one is moving left and right and the proper footwork to move left and right. You could have one station of how to field short and long hops. You could have one station of over the shoulder fly balls, basically being thrown into the shallow outfield where you have to look over your shoulder and catch the ball. You could have slow rollers as a center. You could have straight on ground balls, just regular ground balls as a center. So these are five different methods on what you will experience when you field a ground ball. And this is just a different style of stations that you can do. So a couple things with the stations to think about is all stations should be connected in some way. And having stations that flow together lets players connect one skill piece to the next, which ultimately allows them to put together the entire desired skill, right? So if they can piece together each station, okay, station one, we worked on this part, station two, we worked on this part, station three, and then by the end, they add them all up to practice the entire skill. That just, like I said, maximizes their comprehension and their learning of the skill. And when stations involve completely different skills, uh, there's no real depth to the player's learning and everything is surface level and the growth is limited. So what I mean is if you're trying to work on different little skills that aren't really connected with each other, you can't really go in depth at each center because each center is about what, eight to 10 minutes. So the player's learning is very limited based on that amount of time that you have to teach that one skill. And that's just something to think about when you're doing centers. Now, now we're going to get into some examples of the progression and the different methods for you. Um, this is a five station progression example, and the skill is going to be taking proper angles towards fly balls and ground balls in the outfield. So station one, you would just do footwork, right? That's the most basic part of the skill is the footwork, right? The players are going to work on turning their hips and getting the correct body position to run and cut off a ball. And you're not going to use any balls in this center because they're only working on footwork. You don't want to have them trying to think about fielding a ball when they're trying to think about their hips and their footwork and everything, right? So in station one, they're just working on their footwork. Station two, you're going to use the footwork from station one to pursue a stationary ball. And the ball is going to be moved to different spots for different route angles. So what's going to happen is you're going to have the players stand in one spot and you're going to place the ball somewhere behind them to the right, to the left, wherever you'd like. And they are going to just pursue that ball that is stationary, right? They're going to turn their hips. They're going to turn their body and they're going to pursue the ball and take that proper angle to the stationary ball. 
They're not going to field anything. The ball is just going to be sitting there. And in this center, you can move the ball to different areas. So they have to take different routes to that specific ball, right? So that's station two. And station three, ground balls. You're going to practice taking the proper angle to cut off the ball. So this station is only ground balls in the outfield. The coach is going to hit the ground balls and each player is going to pursue every ground ball and they're going to practice taking their proper angles to cut off the ball. Station four is fly balls, right? You're going to practice taking proper angle and tracking fly ball on the run. And station five, you're going to do full throttle fly balls and ground balls hit with a fungo. So station five is more of the pinnacle of the skill, the whole entire skill put together that we were trying to progress to. And that's just fielding fly balls and ground balls in the outfield, right? So that's just a little quick progression example of what you can think about when you set up your stations and try and connect them together using the progression style of practicing a skill. Now we're gonna get into different methods, all right? So this is five stations for different methods, and the skill is hitting to the opposite field. So station one is just recognizing strikes and balls, and the players are going to stand up to the plate with no swinging, and they're going to watch pitches to the outside corner. And you can have somebody throw them, you can have a coach throw them, you can do a pitching machine, whatever you want to do, but they're just going to watch pitches to the outside corner, and they are going to call whether it is a ball or strike. And pitch recognition is huge in hitting the outside pitch. But this is a great drill to practice your vision for recognizing the outside pitch and what's a ball and what's a strike. And that's really the first step, right? So station two, you're going to throw the bat to a partner towards the opposite field. And really, this drill needs plenty of room, and the outfield is a good place to be because you are literally going to be throwing the bat, right? If you're practicing with a partner, you're going to be setting up in your stance, right? Your partner is going to be more towards the second base side or the opposite field side. And you are literally going to be here, and you are going to take your swing, and you're going to throw your bat towards your partner. Obviously, we need a lot of space so nobody gets hit with a bat, right? So the outfield, having a lot of outfield space would be a really good space for this. But yeah, the players are literally just going to throw the bat, literally let go and throw the bat. And what this does is it basically gets their whole momentum going towards the opposite field and knowing what it feels like to get their power going towards the opposite field. Because I guarantee you, a lot of players, they are going to throw it if they're right-handed towards the third base side and left-handers are going to throw it towards the first base side because they have no because that's how their swing goes there it's more of a pull swing and they need to understand how to get their energy and everything going towards the opposite field when they want to hit the outside pitch station 3 a t is going to be placed on the outside corner and you're going to hit to the opposite field so it's really simple t drill just hitting the outside corner and notice how these are all different methods of hitting the outside pitch. Um, self toss, you're going to hit to the opposite field. So this is another way that you can practice hitting the outside pitch and hitting to the opposite field is just self toss, right? Uh, and station five, you're going to be hitting wiffle balls to the opposite field. Or if you're doing full batting practice or even a batting cage with baseballs, if you have cage access. So basically this station five is kind of like the full swing and full uh, hitting to the opposite field and everything. So I hope you enjoyed this bullpen bulletin and don't forget to grab your free guide link below. I have a free two hour practice plan. If you look down in the description, there's about six or seven of them down there. Um, feel free to grab whatever you would like. I made them for you for free to help you out in your baseball journey. So I really hope you enjoyed this new bullpen bulletin. I will be back next week with a brand new piece of content. So make sure you stay tuned and I hope you can use stations in your next practice for maximum productivity. I'll see you next week.